Hi guys, it's Dylan from Bijou Diamond Jewelry in London with another watch review and today we're looking at the Rolex Submariner Reference 116613LB. I'm going to cover some basic history in this video of the Submariner but if you want to learn some more in-depth history of the Submariner uh, then go and check out my uh, review I did last week of the 114060. Okay, so the Submariner was released in 1953 uh, initially, and then I'm going to skip a few years on, 30 years in fact, to when we saw the first uh, bimetal version, so steel and yellow gold version, and that was in 1983, and that was the reference 16613. And then let's skip another few years on to 2009, and that's when we saw the release of this version that we're looking at today, which is the 116613LB which is the newer ceramic um, version of the Submariner. So it features a ceramic bezel and the super case as well. And that was actually the first Submariner uh, in the Rolex collection to be released back in 2009 with the new super case and uh, the ceramic bezel. So this combination of steel and yellow gold uh, from Rolex specifically is known as Rolesso. And it comes from uh, a combination of the French for gold, which is or, OR and mixture of that and Rolex, so Rolex or. And Rolex actually patented this name back in 1933. Um, and then the first watch to actually feature Rolex, or, you know, steel and yellow gold, uh, was the Datejust in 1948. The Datejust has been pretty much the most iconic Rolex or watch from uh, Rolex. Um, and there's a few other watches in the collection that are famous for it as well, but the Datejust is definitely the most famous Rolex or uh, watch in the Rolex collection. Rolesso um, has always been yellow gold until 2011, so quite recently, and that was when the Rolesso was first released in a rose gold option, so steel and rose gold. Uh, but until then, only yellow gold had been implemented in the design. Okay, so that's a little bit of history uh, behind Rolesso and also uh, the Submariner as well, um, the, specifically the bimetal Submariner. So let's jump into the features of this watch and starting as always with the clasp. Uh, this watch features the same glide lock clasp from the uh, Submariner that we looked at last week and that is an amazing, really useful clasp, very, very comfortable and I, when I owned my Submariner before, uh, when I wore it on a bracelet, I found it an extremely useful feature on the watch because your wrist expands and contracts, especially in the summer when it gets hot uh, and it can become really uncomfortable if you have a bracelet that just fits you perfectly, um, you know, when your wrist is kind of just normal size, but the moment it expands, the bracelet can really pinch against your skin. So it's brilliant to be able to have the option on the glide lock to just quickly adjust uh, the clasp and be able to make it bigger or smaller. Um, as I mentioned last week, the glide lock clasp was invented for divers so that they could wear the watch during the day or you know, just normally with normal clothes on their bare wrist. And then when they wanted to make the bracelet slightly bigger um, to wear over the top of a dive suit, they were able to quickly adjust the bracelet without having to take out or add links. The glide lock mechanism is really, really easy to use. You sort of pull it up um, and then snap it down onto the selection or the notch that you want. Uh, there's about 10 notches total of 20 mil uh, worth of movement in terms of the size of the bracelet. And therefore each notch is around two millimeters in uh, distance apart. So you can really fine tune the size of the bracelet, which is really nice. Uh, the closest to this is the easy link feature on some Rolexes, um, specifically Daytona's feature that uh, feature, and as does the GMT, and it just means, it's just basically a looped over link and it gives you five mil uh, extra extension, which is useful, again, if your wrist expands, uh, but five mil is quite a lot of um, you know bracelet extension, so it can sometimes feel quite baggy if you go from perfect fit to that. Uh, so this is much more useful, the glide lock. Uh, the glide lock clasp on this watch um, versus the Submariner that we looked at last week is slightly different and that is because obviously we have a Rolesser uh, version which features a steel uh, sides or steel sides and then polished 18 karat yellow gold down the center. Uh, unlike last week's which was obviously all steel and also all brushed. These clasps are brilliant, very solid. They're not really gonna wear out over time. Fantastic daily wearers. Uh, the only thing that I also did mention last week was that I found this clasp quite deep and therefore it can be a little bit of a scratch magnet because of that, uh, because it's so large as well. It just is a lot easier to scratch and catch on the edge of a table or something uh, versus like a Daytona clasp or a GMT, just the standard Oyster clasp. Moving on to the bracelet, we have 
the standard Oyster bracelet from Rolex, very iconic bracelet from Rolex, very, very, very comfortable as well. And this specific variation features uh, polished uh, Centrelinx, 18 karat yellow gold polished Centrelinx with brushed steel 904 uh, outer links. Moving now up onto the case of the watch, we have polished sides to this watch, uh, both the crown side and opposite side. Um, we've got polished crown guards as well, which look really nice, and also a polished crown in 18 karat yellow gold. And this case is obviously the super case that we saw released in 2009, making this reference the 116613LB. Uh, that we're looking at today and this is actually a slightly later version of that as well. Moving now on to the bezel, we have an 18 karat yellow gold bezel uh, with these really nice notches around the edge as I mentioned last week, that's for gripping with gloves for a diver uh, and we've got our loom at 12 o'clock or the top position on the bezel just depends where you've rotated it around to and most importantly we've got a ceramic bezel which means it's not really going to wear out over time it's not going to be subject to uh, UV fading from the sun like we see on some of the older submariners that kind of have this ghostly bezel uh, this one won't have that that blue color will stay forever uh, it's also extremely hard ceramic which means that it's pretty scratch resistant, uh, much better than the older plastic or Bakelite bezels that we used to have back in the uh, old days with Submariners. And we've also got milled out uh, indexes and also numbers on the bezel for decompression stops and also times for how long you spent underwater. And these are milled out from the ceramic. Uh, so we have these notches in the ceramic and then they're actually filled with 18 karat yellow gold. Moving on to the dial, we have an amazing blue sunburst dial. Such a cool effect, the sunburst. That's one of my favorite things about Rolex is, is that sunburst. And one of my favorite variations of a sunburst dial is a blue sunburst dial, because uh, you almost have this kind of purpley effect. It just looks amazing. Further on to the dial, we've got these, uh, like a yellow print for the Rolex logo and the Submariner and all the details of the watch, which are really, really nice. I love that um, yellow against the blue, the print. Uh, we've also got yellow gold hands, 18 karat yellow gold hands with uh, yellow gold indexes as well. My favorite thing about this watch is of course the blue. Um, it's just such a cool look, the blue uh, with the yellow gold. Just they complement each other so nicely, blue and yellow. Um, yeah, the combination is amazing. Especially, like I said, this sunburst paired with that uh, ceramic bezel. Uh, it's kind of a little bit retro Rolex in a way. It reminds me a lot of the reference 16618 uh, from 1969, the full yellow gold with the blue bezel and blue dial. That's just such an iconic Rolex to me. The blue and the gold is just such a, a cool look. It reminds me a little bit of Wolf of Wall Street. It's kind of a little bit loud and, you know, very, very cool at the same time. Uh, it's kind of got that yacht look about it, that kind of really luxurious feel, uh, the blue and the gold. Because it's such a nice tone of blue, that kind of royal in a way, uh, with hints of purple, it's such a characterful watch. Um, and the blue really, really, really brings it to life. Uh, I would definitely get the blue over the black version personally. Um, I just think it's such a cool uh, submariner. And to me, this is one of the ultimate submariners because of that. This has got Rolex through and through and through in its DNA. To me, this is really what the brand is about. Uh, this sort of Submariner with the gold, the luxury edge to a tool, that's exactly what this watch, this specific variation of the Submariner is, is even though this watch is a tool, it has a really nice luxurious feel to it with that bimetal, that yellow gold on the watch. Fantastic watch if you want to wear it uh, casually and also smart. Uh, the casual comes in with the kind of uh, steel side of the watch and also the blue makes it a little bit more casual as well. Uh, whereas the gold and kind of the slightly smarter look, the, the, um, the bimetal and the polished accents to the watch add to the piece, makes this watch actually really wearable uh, for more formal occasions as well, especially if you're wearing it on the bracelet. Would I own this watch? 100%. It's one of my favorite Rolexes in the collection. Like I said, to me, this is the epitome of Rolex. Uh, it's just a fantastic looking watch, especially with that sunburst dial. Uh, this version is slightly later on uh, than some of the early 116613LB uh, versions from, I think it's before 2012. Uh, they featured just a lacquer blue dial, like a gloss blue dial, um, which isn't as lively as this. It is a very nice looking watch, uh, but I love the sunburst. I think the sunburst is just a really, really nice addition to this piece and brings the watch so much life. 
Thanks guys for watching. Let us know in the comments what else you'd like to see uh, watch review wise or watch discussion video wise. Would you like to see this watch versus a steel Submariner say? Uh, what do you think of this piece? Would you own this Submariner? And as always, our contact details are in the description if you're interested in this spine metal Submariner or any other watch in the Swiss watch industry, your Rolex collection, Audemars Piguet, uh, Patek, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We'd be more than happy to order that watch in for you uh, as part of the service we offer here at Bijou Diamond Jewelry.